Okay, so so far we talked about different types of OLS assumptions and in particular we were interested in estimating a model like this model and essentially the whole point is to estimate the impact of a variable like x1 on y and we said that since we do not know the actual impact of x1 on y which is in the population that is we do not know this population parameter however we do know what is happening in the sample for example if we pick one sample will get a value of this beta as beta hat and if we pick another sample as two we'll get another value of beta hat so all we are saying here is that we hope that this beta hat it will be equal to this population beta that is the estimates that we are getting from this sample it will be equal to this population estimate on average these are the six OLS assumptions that we discussed so far. The first is the linearity of these coefficient values. That is, we are assuming that the relationship between x1 and y is linear, and I talked about the linearity in the previous videos. Our second assumption was that these samples that we are picking from a population, those are not systematic, and these samples are picked up at random from this population. And the third assumption was the sample variation in axes. And we saw this in terms of SST, total sum of squared from these axes should be large. And then we talked about the assumption of a zero conditional mean, that is the error term should be uncorrelated with the x variables. And if these first four assumptions are met, it implies that our estimated values from sample, that is our expected value of these beta hats, should be equal to the actual population parameter, that is on average, we will get a true effect of any of the x variable on y. That is, although these beta coefficients or these uh, coefficient values will differ from sample to sample, what we are saying is that uh, on average, we will be able to get this effect right. And then if we include the homoscedasticity in it, we should be able to get the variance of these coefficient values. And then this normality assumption is used to get the t-test and the f-test and under the first five assumptions of the OLS we say that OLS is blue that is it is best linear unbiased estimator and by best we mean it is efficient okay so OLS is blue that is it is best it has a minimum variance it is more efficient that it is linear and is unbiased and it's an estimator. We'll see there are other estimators as well, but out of those, OLS is the best if the first five assumptions of OLS are met. And these sample properties are met even for a small sample size. In this chapter, we're going to talk about the asymptotic properties of OLS, the properties of OLS when n goes to infinity, and I will talk about three properties. The consistency of the OLS, Number two, I will talk about the normality. And number three, I will talk about the efficiency of OLS estimates. So now we're going to talk about these properties when n goes to infinity or n is very large. I'll see you in the next video to talk about these properties. Bye-bye.